Hey guys, it's Thomas here with TechnoVision and welcome to the next part of our Spigot tutorial series. In this episode, we're going to be taking a look at the Events API, which is going to let you do a bunch of customizable stuff with your plugin. And really what events are is any sort of action in the game, uh, whether it's from a player or something you do in your inventory or even like the server doing something. Uh, and it sparks your listener to uh, run your code. That's pretty much all it is. And if we go to the first link in the description here, I actually have the API open uh, for our player events. Just know if we go back here that there are a bunch of different type of events. There's events for things that the server does, player, enchantment, block, um, but we're really only gonna focus on player in this episode. Although just know that all the different events, I can't cover them all of course, cause there's so many, uh, they're all here and you can check them out and mess around with them yourself. All right, so you can go back to your IntelliJ program now. And inside of here, we wanna make a package for our events. So just go to your main package here, right click, new package, and we're gonna name this events, of course. Um, and inside of here is going to house multiple classes that will have events in them. You don't have to use just one class, you can use multiple. In fact, that's probably preferable based on what you're doing. But I'm just going to use one, of course, because we're just doing a really quick tutorial here. Uh, so right click on this package, new Java class, and I'm going to name this tutorial events. Uh, events, there we go. And this class, the name doesn't matter. You can just name it whatever you'd like, but I think it's, you know, this is the name of my plugin, lets you know, and it also lets you know that there's events in there. And this needs to implement, implement listener. And you wanna make sure you import this from the bucket API. Uh, there we go. And a listener in Spigot is really um, just listening for an event, uh, those events that we looked at earlier. And once those events uh, get called or they happen in the server, then uh, it, this plugin will run your code essentially. All right, so inside of here, we want to create a method. You're gonna make a new method for every single event that happens uh, that you wanna change or, or add code to. So first you wanna make sure that it has event handler, at event handler. And this is gonna make sure that your listener is actually looking at it. Uh, and once we have that, we can actually make our method. So I'm gonna make a public static void method. And the name, I'm just gonna name it whatever uh, corresponds with the event I'm using. So the event I'm gonna use, and again, it's in this list somewhere, I'm not gonna try and find it, but uh, I'm gonna use the player uh, join event. So uh, I'm gonna name this on player join. And I'm naming it this because this code will implement or will, uh, excuse me, will run when the player joins. So on player join, this code runs and uh, the arguments are going to be our event. So this is where you're going to put the actual event. And in my case, it's the player join event. So player join events. And uh, you want to make sure you import that first. There we go. And I'm just gonna name it, uh, you can name it E, e uh, I'm gonna name it event just so you can see it easier, uh, but you can name it whatever you'd like, of course. And uh, let's add some curly braces there. And inside of here, again, what this is saying is when this player join event happens, so when a, a player joins the server, this code is gonna be run. Uh, and that's made sure of because of the listener here. So what we can do here is we can take this event that we have here, event dot, and we can actually get the player, get player. Oh, there we go. And I guess what I should have done is actually assign it to a player. So we want to make a variable player player is equal to event.getPlayer. And we can import player uh, from bucket or spigot. And now we have the player that actually caused the event. So in our case, the player that joined the server. And all we're going to do now is send them a message. So player dot, and you can see this player has a ton of different options just a bunch of different stuff that you can do really with them. Uh, but in my case, we just want to send message and it's right there at the top. Uh, and my message is going to be colored, I think. So I'm going to do chat color dots, light purple sounds good to me. Plus, and our message, of course, uh, in my case, I'm just going to say, welcome to the server and maybe a smiley face. Um, so what this is going to do just to run through it all one more time, uh, when a player joins the server, because we have a player join event, uh, we're going to get that player and then we're going to send that player a message and it's going to be a light purple message that just says welcome to the server. Uh, so now we're pretty much done. We do actually have to register our, um, our events. So go over to your main class here again and on enable, we need to register everything. So right below, uh, I guess right above because uh, we don't want to do below since this, uh, this line says everything is finished. Um, we're going to register it. So you want to get server dot get plugin manager. 
dot register events. And in register events, the first you have to pass in two things. First, uh, your your events class. So new tutorial events, um, and we can import that. Uh, there we go, import. And we need to uh, pass in the actual plugin. So it's just this class. So we're just gonna type this. Um, and you're gonna have to do this for every new class that you um, you make events. So if you have a ton of events in here, that's okay. You can just do it one time. But if you had three different classes, for example, that all had events in them, you'd have to have three of these lines, each with uh, your new class right here. Uh, so now you're pretty much done. You can file, save all, uh, build, build artifacts, build, and that will build your plugin. And now we can actually go to our desktop, go to plugins, server, uh, just double check that it's in the plugins folder. There we go. That's our plugin and we can run the server uh, and I will see you guys in the game once I join the server. All right. So I'm in the game and we can go to multiplayer and uh, there's our server right there. And if you, again, if you don't know how to connect to your server, I mentioned it last time, but you can just add a server and just type a local host and that will send you to your server. Uh, but when I join, we should expect a message and there we go. You can see that there is a message there that says welcome to the server uh, right when we join. And just to make sure um, if we join again, this should happen every time we join. There we go. So we can see we got the same message. So our event is working. All right. So now that we have one of our events working, we can actually go ahead and make a more advanced event just so you can sort of get an idea of how this process works. So if we go to our uh, events list here, you can see that again, we have a ton of events here. Uh, let's look for one that is interesting to me. Um, I am going to do the player walk event. Where is it? Oh, there we go. Player walk event. So let's go to our, our IntelliJ here, go back to our events class, and we're going to make a new method here. Make sure you do at event handler. And, uh, in this method, what I'm going to do is make, you know, sort of a more advanced event where when a player walks on a block, uh, if the block happens to be a stone block, then it will send the player a message saying, you know, Hey, that's a stone block just, you know, for testing purposes. So I'm going to do public static void, and I'm going to name this on player walk. And we're going to pass in the player walk event. I guess it's the player move event, excuse me, uh, player move event. And I'm going to name it event again, and that's some curly braces. And oh, those are not the right braces, curly braces. There we go. And we can import our player move event. All right. So inside of here, uh, the way I'm thinking about this is we get the block that the player is standing on and then, you know, check if it's a stone block and then send a message accordingly. So, uh, we can do lots of this, lots of different ways. I guess the best way is to first get the, the actual position of the block. So, well, let's first get the player. We want player player is equal to event dot get player. There we go. Just like last time. And now that we have the player, uh, let's make three variables, one for each position for the block. Uh, so I guess the best way to do this is to get the player's position first. So int X is equal to player dot get location dot get block X. All right. So that's going to get the X location of the player. Then we can do the same. We can just copy and paste. Actually, uh, we can do the same for Y. So block Y. Um, that's going to assign to a, a, a variable or a variable a Y. Um, and we can do the same for Z as well. There we go. So now we have the X, Y, and Z coordinate of our player. Now that we have that, let's make a few spaces here. Uh, we want to get the block of the position that the player is standing on. So uh, I guess we should hold a material type. So material, um, let's name this uh, block is equal to, um, first let's import material. Uh, from bucket and this is gonna be equal to I guess the best way to do this is to get player dot get world dot get block at and we can pass in our X Y and Z um, and then dot get type which will get us the material type um, and now we have a problem here. This X, Y, and Z value is the player's location. So it's just going to return an air block because the player uh, isn't 
standing in a block. So we need to get the block directly below the player, the one it's standing on. And we can do that by just subtracting one from the Y value, because if the Y value is the up and down plane in Minecraft, then the block the player is standing on would be one below uh, the player's location, if that makes any sense at all. Uh, so now we have the block that the player is standing on, uh, and now we can check uh, the block. So if block uh, is equal to material dots stone, there we go. Uh, so if the block happens to be stone, then we can player dot send message, um, and we can do chat color uh, dot green maybe, just for fun, uh, plus. And the message will just be, uh, I don't really know, I don't have anything planned for this, so let's just say you are standing on stone, exclamation mark, because it's so important. Um, and uh, if they're not standing on stone, then we won't send anything. Uh, otherwise, we'll just spam the console every time the player walks on anything. Uh, and I think that is good enough. So let's file, save all, build, build artifacts, build, and I will restart the server and see you guys in the game. Okay, so we joined the server, and I guess what we should do is get a stone block here. Uh, stone, there we go. And you can see that uh, we're walking around, there's no message being sent, so that seems to be working fine. But now let's make a line of stone. And when we move on the stone, it should spam us with messages, I would assume, saying uh, you are standing on stone. So here we go. Oh, and there we go, we, you are standing on stone. Very ominous message, uh, but you can see that it is working. And uh, let's just type like, hey. Uh, so as soon as we hop off the uh, the stone here, you can see that it is no longer sending because it's only sending, we checked if it's a, a stone block. All right, so that's gonna do it for this tutorial. Thanks guys so much for watching. I hope you learned a lot about events. And I just wanna mention that in the description, I will have uh, a link to the spigot page where they actually show you how to do uh, use the event API in um, in words in case it's a little bit easier for you to follow and it goes a lot more in depth about advanced functions uh, in case that's something that you're interested in um, so yeah I just thought I'd, I'd put it down below uh, for ease of access and please 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 check out this documentation it will literally show you every single event in the game so there's no question about what events exist um, but yeah, I will also link hopefully a github link in the description so you can check out this code if you want to mess with it yourself But I will see you guys in the next episode